Today we're going to take a look at two very interesting hobbies and decide which is better, coin collecting or Pokemon card collecting. That's absolute madness, I should never pit the two against each other. Collecting in any capacity is absolutely wonderful and if you only collect Pokemon cards and have no interest in coins, rest assured you still have my full respect. Anything you collect and anything that brings you joy should be first and foremost and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But as someone who grew up in the peak of the Pokemon craze, I'm a, I was born in the early 90s so it was huge throughout my time in primary school and I had a big collection of Pokemon cards and thoroughly enjoyed that time and it's a very nostalgic thing for me. And I think that's something to probably, I'll start off with that because collecting for a lot of people is rooted in, can be rooted in something like nostalgia and for me, and I can speak to this, you know, I've got, I've brought a few such examples here today. Magma was my favourite Pokemon. I have here one of the 1999 first edition fossil cards, as well as the 1997, this is the Japanese issue. So these are both Gem Mint 10s, been certified. So I, I really do enjoy Pokemon card collecting. It's, it's a lot of fun, but for me, it's purely just a nostalgic interest. And beyond that, I look at coin collecting as something with so much more depth and I learn so much more about, I often tell people I learn, I've learned a lot more about world history and Australian history through my love of coin and banknote collecting. And it's been thanks to that that I've been able to build this channel and build a business for myself. And that's not to discredit something like Pokemon card collecting, but just for me personally, it really only goes back to sort of the mid 1990s and there's there's a lot to learn there's a lot of lore and there's a whole universe there and I understand that it's a really really big part uh, there's a huge culture around it which is great but for me it doesn't have nearly the same depth as coin collecting when you know you can go back and I'll give one such example now often whenever I do media and things like that I say you know you can you can, when you're collecting coins, you can hold in your hand a coin that was circulating at the time of emperors like Alexander the Great. That's a tangible piece of history and for me, there's no, there's really no comparable example in something like Pokemon. Which again, is not to discredit it. I, and I don't want people to think that this is Matt getting on his high horse saying, oh, coins are so much better than Pokemon cards because you know, like I said at the outset of the video, whatever you're collecting, as long as you're getting enjoyment from it, I'm happy for you. Get into it. Have a good time. That's, you know, that's that's the spice of life. Everyone has different interests, but for me personally, it's going to come as no shock that coins are a clear winner for me in terms of what brings me happiness and what I get a kick out of, which is also sharing sharing my knowledge as well. I really enjoy that people appreciate me spending their time to put these videos together and highlight different bibs and bobs. I'll give you another example of something that in coin collecting is, you know, a really big deal. And I guess you could say, to draw a comparison in terms of modern coin collectors in Australia and say perhaps Pokemon card collectors, it's nice to see that there are what's often referred to as grail items. For a lot of people in the Pokemon world, that'll be a base set, first edition, shadowless Charizard, you know, in a PSA 10 or something like that, which will probably sell for a million dollars or something like that. But for coin collectors, modern decimal collectors, that'd be the red poppy. And for pre-decimal collectors, that might be a 1930 penny. What I'm getting at is that there are, there are parallels to be had there. And I think that collecting either as long as you're enjoying yourself is great there's so much to learn and so and i was shocked pokemon cards are almost there are more parallels in my mind with something like stamp collecting i thought stamp collecting was quite a simple pursuit until i went and sat for a few hours with robert kennedy of kennedy stamps in new south wales and he was explaining all the various watermarks the different um perforations on stamps you know, you think you've got one stamp, turns out there's 25 variations on that one particular stamp and you need to have a really keen eye or a professional to help you out with identifying the specifics of it. Similarly in Pokemon collecting, there are subtle variations, as I hinted at earlier, whether or not the design of the 
the artwork has a shadow or not can be you know a significant value factor for the for collectors in that market and it's really interesting like i always say the more you learn the more you enjoy and the more fun it becomes also within coin collecting you have sort of offshoots so you get things like these like the aztec two ounce silver aztec stacker this isn't even a coin so if you flip it over it's just the same design so the intention with these is that if you were to get multiple of them you can stack them up and quite physically stack up your silver collection so things like that really capture my imagination and you know you look into the history of things like these and what they're depicting and it all sort of escalates from there and if you have an interest in that type of thing you can collect what then becomes a tangible link to that one other cool part of collecting and this is uh, i'm sorry this hasn't really been much of a comparison video this is just me talking about things that I find to be cool and this is this is one such example you have here a 1931 Perth Mint Gold Sovereign which had a face value of one pound followed by a 1932 one pound banknote so this was issued the following year when Australia departed the gold standard so this was your pound and then this became your pound so things like that you know I'm actually holding a bit of history so when you you talk about these concepts and ideas it's so fascinating that you can have tangible links to them so for me coin collecting banknote collecting it's always going to come out on top but i can see the appeal for both but in my personal opinion there is significantly more depth and a lot more to be learned about and understood when it comes to coin collecting perhaps a little more nuance to it although you can approach these things as aggressively and want to learn everything or you can just enjoy yourself and get a few bits and pieces and you know put them up on display and you know that can be enough for some people unfortunately for me i fall into the earlier category i dive right far deep into these things and i want to learn as much as possible and get really immersed in the history and share information with lovely communities like this one here on youtube so there you go uh, just a little bit i guess rather than a competition it's been more of a highlight i just wanted to acknowledge that there are a lot of people out there that collect other things specifically pokemon cards which is an absolutely wonderful community it's one that i have nothing to do with so i hope there's plenty of lovely people in there i'm sure you know like any industry even with the the coin community you get some troublemakers out there but if you steer clear you know stick to channels like this friendly people that are in it for the right reasons and you're, you're bound to enjoy yourself so there you go. I'm not sure I've answered any questions, but that's just a highlight video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy coin collecting or you're wanting to learn more about collecting as a hobby for coins, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're only interested in Pokemon cards and things like that, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. I've exhausted all of my knowledge on the subject. You might need to <laughs> go find another channel. But at any rate, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.